at this point, I want to give you uh, maybe a more detailed sense of what atoms are. And the, the way that I hope to do this is to talk uh, historically about how atoms were first thought about, or, or probably the first person to think more or less correctly about what atoms are. And the first person to do that is someone named John Dalton. His last name will come up uh, later on in the course and later on actually in this unit as well. But John Dalton was uh, a scientist who lived a few hundred years ago, and he came up with basically the, what's considered the first sort of uh, really reasonable understanding of what atoms are. So what Dalton said is that all matter, all physical material, is made up of tiny particles called atoms. And that isn't too earth-shattering uh, news right now. Um, what he also said is that all atoms of a particular element are similar to each other. So if you have a copper atom, uh, every copper atom is similar to every other copper atom. And those elements that are of a particular element are different from atoms of other types of elements. So copper atoms are different from carbon atoms, and carbon atoms are different from hydrogen atoms. So again, nothing too earth-shattering uh, from Dalton there as well. So as an example here, are th this might be my cartoon representation of a bunch of atoms that are the same type. In other words, they're all drawn as gray circles, and so they're all basically the same type of atom. Maybe these are, are carbon atoms. This is one, this is a different one, etc., etc. Um, Dalton had other uh, ideas about what atoms were as well. Dalton also said that atoms of two or more elements, so if you take two or more elements and combine them, they will make uh, materials called compounds. And we defined compounds in this way in the previous unit. Dalton also said that a specific compound, if you're talking about one particular type of compound, it's always made up of the same kinds of atoms. And then if you have a chemical reaction, what's actually going on is that you're rearranging, separating, or combining different types of atoms in ways that uh, they weren't originally. So as an example, uh, this has been my cartoon uh, representation of water molecules. Um, it's always two hydrogen atoms, these two circle, two red circles, attached to one oxygen atom because the formula for water is H2O. And so these are, are water molecules. These are uh, one type of compound. And what Dalton is saying is that any particular type of compound is always made up of the same kinds of atoms. So what Dal Dalton was saying is that, look, if you have water and you could look closely enough, you will always see two hydrogen atoms attached to one oxygen. And they'll always be attached in the same way. And then what Dalton said is that if you have a chemical reaction uh, for water, as an example, you'll actually be rearranging the way these atoms are attached to each other. And that's sort of shown in cartoon fashion here. Let's say that we have two water molecules, and if there's a chemical reaction, um, what might happen is you might rip off the hydrogen atoms and separate them from the oxygen atom, and then attach the hydrogen atoms to each other, and you might also rip off the blue oxygen atoms and attach them to each other. And whenever you rearrange or separate or combine the atoms um, of a particular compound, then you're basically performing some type of chemical reaction. So this is just a cartoon version of a chemical reaction. So at, at this point, I want to explore one of the pieces that we just talked about, one of the points that we just talked about in more detail. And that point is this. Uh, I said previously that an atom is the smallest piece of an element that still behaves like that element. And I want to talk about that in more detail. Um, to, to talk about that in more detail, I want to use an analogy. Over in this picture on the lower left, uh, you can see a bunch of cars. They look more or less identical. Um, they are a bunch of Ferraris. And the idea is that each one is a Ferrari. If you take away all of the others and say, leave this one up front, it still behaves like a Ferrari because it is a Ferrari. Um, however, you could uh, break this in this vehicle into smaller pieces, right? You could take out the steering wheel. And the steering wheel itself is a piece of this car, but it's no longer a Ferrari. Or you could take out one of the wheels, and the wheel is no longer a Ferrari. It's just a piece of a Ferrari. And the same generally holds true about atoms. So an atom is the smallest piece of an element that still behaves like that element. So let's talk about this penny over here. This is a copper penny. If you could zoom in, uh, zoom in enough, you could see that this penny is made almost exclusively of copper atoms. They're all more or less the same. So this is my cartoon representation of a bunch of copper atoms laid end to end. And the idea is that um, 
this is one particular atom and it behaves like a copper atom and so do the others here. However, you could break this atom into smaller and smaller pieces as well. The only thing is those smaller and smaller pieces are no longer behaving like copper atoms. They're behaving like pieces of copper atoms in the same way that the steering wheel or the wheel or the headlight of the Ferrari behaves like a piece of the Ferrari. In other words, these parts of the car are no longer Ferraris and you can actually break the atom into smaller and smaller pieces, but they're no longer uh, behaving like copper atoms. So that, that's the initial point that I'm trying to make. The next question, however, is that if you can break this atom into smaller and smaller pieces and get pieces out, what exactly are those pieces that are making up the copper atom? So on the past bunch of slides, I have been drawing atoms in cartoon fashion as essentially a circle with a certain color. And, but I just told you on the previous slide that you can actually break atoms into smaller and smaller pieces, and you, you end up with pieces of the atom. So I, I want to break away from the convention of drawing an atom as just a colored circle for a moment and point out to you that the atom isn't just a, a big circle or a big ball. It's actually made of certain specific uh, types of pieces that you see over and over again. And specifically, the atom is made of three particles. And I put particles in quotes there because uh, although particles is a formal term in chemistry, what it really means is little parts. So the atom is made of three particles. The first particle that we'll talk about is called a proton. So atoms can be made of protons. They can also be made of electrons. And they can also be made of neutrons. And usually atoms are made of uh, many of these. And depending on the atom, there will be a certain number of protons, certain number of electrons, certain number of neutrons. So what is a proton? First of all, in cartoon fashion, I will tend to draw, in this course, I will tend to draw protons as colored red circles. So here, there are two protons that I'm showing you. Neutrons, I will tend to uh, draw as similarly sized circle, but it will be colored gray. So this is my cartoon version of a neutron. And electrons are actually smaller, so I will draw them as uh, smaller blue circles. And here I have three electrons, and the idea is that they are orbiting around the two protons and the one neutron. Um, and this, this is basically, this, this whole circle is I want you to think of it as a zoomed-in version of the atoms that I was showing you on the previous slide. So here we're zooming in and we're looking at the different pieces of one particular atom. And the idea here is that the protons um, usually sit at the center part of the atom and the protons have uh, what's called a positive electrical charge. So they have an electrical charge and we typically call it a charge of plus one. The neutrons, so this gray one here, um, sometimes atoms can have more than one neutron. These have no no electrical charge, and that's that's really why they're called neutrons because they're electrically neutral. And then finally, the electrons they're smaller than the protons and neutrons, and they have a negative electrical charge. They have the opposite electrical charge that protons have. And typically, we say that each electron has a charge of minus one. The center part of the atom where the protons and neutrons lie is called the nucleus. You might uh, sometimes hear me say that, but that basically just means the center part of the atom. And you can think of the electrons as essentially orbiting around uh, the outside of the nucleus. This uh, orbiting idea is a simplified version of what's really happening. In other words, that's not exactly what's happening, but it's close enough to what's happening that uh, for, for our purposes it's close enough. So this is a zoomed-in version of one particular type of atom, and the idea is that each atom is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, and all atoms, all 118 different types of atoms, are always made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. But what makes them different is the amounts of protons, the amounts of neutrons, and the amounts of electrons. And we'll get into that in more detail um, in, in the next section. However, I want to point out, uh, I'm going to draw a table of the protons, electrons, and neutrons and point out a few other features about these pieces of the atom. And here is the table. Um, in this table, I'm basically giving the name of the particle. I'm also discussing its size. I will, I'm emphasizing again the electrical charge that each particle has. And then the mass or the weight, informally I'm going to speak about the weight, more formally you should say, the mass of the particle in this column, in the third column here. So the idea is the proton has a certain size, 
um, it may seem that I'm trying to be a little bit cute here by saying the size is very tiny. I actually give this, uh, the radius of the proton. I don't expect you to know this, which is why I put very tiny here. All I really want you to know is that the proton is, is extremely small. It's, it's a tiny fraction of even the, the width of an atom. And in this case, it's 8.7 times 10 to the minus 16 meters. And that, that's really difficult for, for the human mind to wrap around. So I just want you to have a sense that protons are very tiny. Each proton has a charge of positive 1. And the mass of each proton, again, is very little. It's, it's uh, in this case, it's 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. And again, I don't expect you to memorize these numbers. I just want you to know that protons have very tiny size, a charge of positive 1, and they have a very tiny mass. Neutrons weigh, uh, have a size that's very similar to that of a proton, which is why I draw them both as circles of similar size. The neutrons have a, an electrical charge of zero, they're neutral, and they weigh essentially the same thing as a proton. Hopefully you can see that this mass and this mass are essentially identical. So I'm saying that they weigh very little and very little. Uh, and again, I just want to emphasize the protons and neutrons have almost the same mass. The electron is a little bit different than the protons and neutrons. First of all, it is extremely tiny in size, which is why I put many varies here. I believe I put four of them. And if you want to get more formal, the size is less than 1 times 10 to the minus 22 meters, which is extremely tiny. Charge is uh, minus 1. And the mass or the weight is much less than the mass and the weight of the protons and neutrons. So the take-home message as far as mass and weight is concerned is I want you to know that the protons and the neutrons have a mass that's about the same. In other words, if you want to think of it as weight, they weigh about the same. And the electron weighs much, much less than either the proton or the neutron. And this will become important um, in the next section.